Hi, chemistry students. My name is Mrs. Kirkman, and I am one of the teachers at North Crowley High School. I have been creating a lot of the lessons y'all have been doing um, and trying to answer some of y'all's questions. I've been scouring the internet for a good video to explain endo and exothermic from what y'all have already been talking about, and I haven't found any that quite hit all of the points that I wanted to talk about, so I'm going to make a video for y'all on here. We have endothermic and we have exothermic reactions and they're involving heat and it's the transfer of heat. Is heat being absorbed or is it being released? And there's two places, there's your system and your surroundings. So we're talking about is your system absorbing that energy or is it releasing that energy into the surroundings? The surroundings are what we feel um, and so we can feel temperature changes happen, um, the air around you or to touch an actual reaction that's taking place. Um, but that being said, I want to just summarize these because you've been watching videos over this for a while and I want to make sure you understand what it's like um, in a balanced equation. I want y'all to think about heat as a reactant or a product. If it's being absorbed, it's going to be a reactant. If it's being released, it's going to be a product. It's there at the end. You're releasing heat. So when you finish, you have your new stuff and heat. Um, and heat wasn't there before. And for the reaction to happen, you need to absorb that energy. It would be a reactant. So I'm going to break down endothermic and exothermic. I have little whiteboards that are going to summarize everything you should have been learning. So I'm going to start with exothermic like all the videos did. In an exothermic reaction, energy is going to be released. It's going to be released from the system into the surroundings. Your system is your chemical reaction that's happening, and your surroundings are the laboratory setting that it's in, um, the container that's in. You should feel a temperature difference as this is happening. So here I have a balanced equation, and in red I have heat. Heat is appearing as a product because in an exothermic reaction, heat is released. So this heat's being released, um, and so we can include it as a product. We can also do stoichiometry calculations with this because um, this is saying as this reaction takes place, as I have one mole of this and one mole of this and two moles of this, this is how much energy I'm going to get out. Well, if I had two moles of these, that would create four moles and that would create twice as much. So you can kind of think of it like another product and you can treat it like such in chemical, whenever you're doing stoichiometry um, problems. Here's an energy diagram, a really basic one, and I just wanna make sure that you understand your energy of your reactants. Right here on the left-hand side is your reactants, on the right-hand side is your products. And so the energy of the reactants is greater than the products because this change is going to release that energy. So all of this information is supporting each other and supporting the definition of an exothermic reaction. So, so you can see it up nice and close. And then endothermic reactions. So an endothermic reaction is when it's absorbing. So the system is absorbing energy from the surroundings. It's taking in energy. An example I like to use is ice in my hand. That ice is absorbing the heat from my hand to make it melt. And so it's taking away from its surroundings. It's absorbing that energy. And so here, energy would be a reactant instead. And it's because it's needed to make that happen. I, that ice needs the energy to absorb to make it melt. If it doesn't have the energy, it's going to stay ice um, until it gets that energy. So heat is a reactant. Energy is absorbed. And then your temperature of your surroundings is going to go down. My hand is gonna get colder as I hold that ice and that ice absorbs the heat from my hand. Um, and then here's my energy diagram. I want you to realize that your reactants right here on the left are going to have less energy than your products. Your products are gonna come out with more energy. There is a positive energy change there. So this kind of summarizes into an exothermic reactions. I hope it helps you realize what they look like in a balanced equation. You can use stoichiometry with them. You should be able to understand energy diagrams and be able to draw a really, really basic one and label it reactants products. And hopefully from the other videos, you learned what activation energy is. Um, if you need more help or have questions, please feel free to reach out to me or whoever your chemistry teacher might be. Y'all have a good day.